Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Today, I want to build an antenna for two meters known as the Roll-Up Slim Jim antenna. Stay tuned. So for anyone that's watched the channel for any length of time, you can pretty much ascertain that I'm quite the antenna nut, and I've done a lot of videos on HF antennas. I have very much ignored uh, VHF and UHF, and I want to get this video out just to help any of the newer hams or someone that maybe just wants to get an antenna up in the tree so they can uh, maybe get their signal out a little bit farther. This is a really easy project. I'm using 450 ohm ladder line that I picked up from a ham swap a couple years ago. Uh, the guy was getting rid of it and said, make me an offer. So I said $2 and I got probably 30 or 40, 50 feet of, uh, of ladder line. So, or you can find it online. You can go to DX engineering or something. I think it's probably I don't know, 75 cents a foot or something like that. You don't need much. So pretty inexpensive antenna as well. You also will need some type of connector. I'm using a crimp on SO239 so I can plug a coax into it as opposed to having a length of coax connected to this antenna as I've done in the past. Other than that, you'll need a soldering iron and uh, uh, I'm going to do everything in metric. So a metric tape measure, but that's pretty much it. For the plans, I went to the website m0ukd.com, typed in what frequency I'm going to center this for 146 megahertz. You do have to change the velocity factor. If you scroll down to the bottom, it talks about that. I changed mine to 0.9, where his defaults to 0.96. Uh, but other than that, we're just going to go with the measurements that we get. I'll throw a picture in here somewhere of what I'm looking at. And yeah, so anyway, let's get started with the build. All right, so the first thing we need to do is cut a length of our 450 ohm ladder line. So the plans say to cut this 140.8 centimeters. So I cut this uh, just a little bit longer than that. And we're gonna actually end up uh, trimming these and splicing the, both lines together on each side. So this is gonna be my bottom. I'm gonna strip this wire here, fold them in, solder them together, and then I'm gonna work towards the top of the antenna but we need to make a gap in here. We have to cut about a two centimeter gap in one of these wires. And then we're gonna come up to the top. We're gonna strip this and solder these two wires together so they form a loop. We're basically making a, uh, an end-fed folded dipole is really what this is. All right, first things first, we're gonna strip these wires. And we're gonna solder them together. We're just gonna kind of fold them over on one another and then solder that. Beautiful. Now our feed point is gonna connect 4.6 centimeters up from the bottom. So I'm starting here at 10 is my one. And then I'm gonna go 4.6 centimeters up, which is, eh, I'll just make a mark right there. And then I'm gonna strip away some wire on both sides about a quarter inch, three eighths inch of wire or insulation on both sides so I can attach. Here's my little pigtail. I'm going to strip this and we're going to solder the wire from the center and the shield to both sides of this. The center conductor is going to go on the longer element that's going to loop back. So I just made a little mark with my thumbnail where I'm going to start cutting. And then I'm going to go a little bit on either side of this mark and just start kind of filleting the insulation off. And we're gonna do this all the way around the wire because this is where we're gonna solder our coax. And we actually need to kind of gouge out a bit of gap in here so we can feed the coax through. I'm gonna wrap it around and solder it. Got a little block of wood just because I'm going to start digging into this a little bit so I can cut some of this insulation out and not destroy my workbench.
There we go. That's what we're looking for. There. Now we're going to prepare our pigtail so we can solder it to what we just cut, the feed point. I actually like to use a little pick like this to spread apart. I got these at Harbor Freight. It comes in a pack of like five of these little dental pick things. So you can unfan the braid and then yank it all over to one side. Twist it all nice and tight together. And then we're going to cut this or strip it rather. Don't cut it, that would be bad. Now, that's going to connect there, and that's going to connect there. So we'll solder those together. This part's kind of a pain in the butt, so if you have, uh, this is just a little clamp to hold the coax together with the uh, antenna. So we can solder this together. All right. Done and done. Nicely soldered. Now I'm going to take a zip tie and a drill with a 3 16 inch drill bit because that's what fits my zip tie. And I'm going to drill a hole on either side of this coax so I can use it as strain relief. Then we can take our zip tie and there we go. I'm going to use our side cutters, cut the excess off. Now that takes strain off of our feed point connection. Now we need to measure from the bottom of the antenna where we soldered the two wires together up 46.2 centimeters and we're going to cut a 2.1 centimeter gap right in here. Note that the side we're going to cut is the side that has the shield soldered to it. So this side has the center of the coax, this side has the shield. So again I'm going to use the real scientific method of marking this with a knife. So let's say 46.2 starts right there. And then a two centimeter, so one two centimeter gap will end right there. And we're just going to cut this little bit of wire out. Snip and snip. And then I'm just going to use these just to cut this whole thing out of here. And that's it. That's our gap. Now the last thing we have to do is strip these wires fold them together and solder them just like we did on the bottom part of this. And the measurement from the top of this gap to where this needs to be is going to be 92 and a half centimeters, which is going to be just enough length for me to fold these guys over and solder them. So we should be pretty perfect. Worst wire strippers ever. Should need a little bit more. Bend them over. And then we'll solder them just like that. Easy peasy. Okay, so a couple things. I just put this on the meter and we'll look at that uh, in a minute. But it was a little off, so I ended up starting with these. I ended up raising these uh, towards the front of the antenna. I just pushed them so like this wire was here this wire was here that helped a little bit but then i ended up trimming probably another quarter of an inch of insulation off of this and now you can see we've got quite a bit of wire here so i added i don't know another three eighths of an inch on either side that, that it shortened and now uh, we're pretty much 
resonant. Uh, I could tweak it a little bit more, but I'm going to leave this where it is. So let's go outside and throw it on the meter uh, on the analyzer and I'll show you guys what it looks like. And then we'll come back in and tidy it up. Now to deploy this, all we have to do is take some rope or string or something and throw it over a tree branch. And because it's window line, we can just tie a knot in here. And then we can raise it up. Make sure you stop before you put the coax on though. Now an important note, I'm using RG213 on this. You really want to use a good coax with these frequencies. If you want to use RG8X, that's fine, but keep it as short as possible. They are incredibly lossy at these frequencies. So really RG213 uh, is going to be the best while still being practical. LMR400 would be better but it's not very uh, friendly to just taking portable and doing what we're doing. So we can raise this up a bit. And let's take a look at it on the meter. So take a look at that. 146 megahertz, 58 ohms, 1.4 SWR, going up to 1 1.8, 1 1.9 SWR, 144, 1.6 so totally usable across the entire two meter band which is great and just for giggles let's look at 440 just it's kind of a harmonic but not really um you could still kind of get away with this on 440 really uh, if you wanted to go up into like the frs frequencies even though that's all kinds of illegal you could it's pretty good there but uh you know, 446, the calling frequency, or 2.6-ish. I mean, that's like every rubber duck antenna that comes uh, with an HT is probably going to have these same results on 440. So, but yeah, two meters looks great. It's what we built it for. I am very happy. Very happy indeed. Now we're going to put some finishing touches on this. I'm going to heat shrink the bottom and the top. Then I'm also going to drill another hole in here so I can put another zip tie so I can have something to hang it to because I'd rather do that than have it tie around here. But that's just me. There's that. And same thing on the top. And now you can hang this a little bit easier. And absolutely no ham radio project is complete without marking your territory first. Noise. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Look at how small this is. It's tiny. Just rolls up so compact, little Velcro around there. You got a nice little uh, antenna for like your go bag or something. Or just if you're new, this is really like, this was the first antenna I built when I first got licensed as a technician years ago. And it's such a fun little project. It might take an hour or so to get it uh, finally tuned up and everything, but uh, they're, they're just so cool. I mean, you can buy these online for like 20 bucks, but what do you learn? You don't learn anything. When you make one of these, you learn how to make your first antenna. And then hopefully you'll get the bug like I did. And antennas are just the most amazing things in the world. So <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you find this content useful, do hit that subscribe button. Also hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. Thank you so much for watching another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff 73, guys. <laughs>